Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're too sleepy. I understand that. And no one can beat Sheikh Yusuf. That's why it's, he's going to make it very hard for me to speak right now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <clears throat> now what? <laughs> sure. What about this? Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa. Wa salamun ala ibadihi alladhi nastafa. La siyama al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira. All praise due to Allah alone. We all praise him and we seek his help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one. And whomsoever Allah leaves us say, none can show him guidance. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, it gives me a great pleasure to stand before you right now. May Allah the Almighty bless us all, bless this gathering, shower us with his mercy and grant us all forgiveness. Ameen. In the next few minutes, inshallah, we'll get to speak about the value of time and how to make the best use of time. To begin with, there is nothing better than the word of Allah the Almighty. There is one chapter in the Quran which is one of the shortest surahs, yet it is one of the greatest, which would be the greatest reference to our topic. You can say it is a cornerstone to anyone who will get to speak about the value of time and the importance of making the best use of time. It is chapter number 103, and it consists of three ayat. It is Surat Al-Asr. And Al-Asr is an Arabic word which refers to time in general. And it, also, and it also refers to the time of Asr which precedes sunset. Referring to the end of the day. And the word Asr is also taken out of Asir which is to squeeze out something. So by the end of the day, when the time is squeezed out, the day is gone. Whenever Allah the Almighty swears by anything in the Quran, it is to either make the audience reflect upon the sacredness of the object of the oath, or the subject of the oath, or both, such as in this surah. Allah the Almighty says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خس إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر. Allah the Almighty is swearing by time, which implies that the object of the oath. Is very significant. He wants the audience to ponder over the object of the oath and the significance of time and also the subject of the oath which is verily mankind are in loss in respect of what? In respect of how they deal with time. Time slips by out of the hands of most of people without realizing. They just realize that it is over. I want you to imagine yourselves in the finals, in the exam room. What you fear the most is when the supervisor says, time is up. And you still have a lot to do. You still have a lot of answers to write down in the sheet. But time is up. You have to hand over the answer sheet. You didn't get to do everything. 
Well, most of people are like that. When Allah the Almighty says, Inna al insana la fi khusr, mankind are in loss in general, most of them, except Alladina Amanu wa Aminu Salihati wa Tawasaw bil Haqi wa Tawasaw bil Sab. It's such a great surah to the point that some of the commentators of the Quran claimed if Allah did not reveal of the Quran any surah but surah al-Asr, it would have been sufficient. I swear by time, verily mankind are in loss except those who believe do good righteous deeds, enjoin one another to what is good, and enjoin one another to patience. Except those who know how to make the best use of time. Except those who realize what is the purpose of life so they make the best use out of it. Awfully, in the ahadith, the Prophet wasallam, in order to exhort, or encourage the audience towards doing something or even abstaining from doing something which is evil, he reminds him of the following. He says, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir. Let whoever believe in Allah and in the last day, let him do what? Honor his guest, honor his neighbor. Let him say what is good or be quiet. Let him not sit on a table in which alcohol and wine is been served. من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فلا يجلسن على مائدة تدور عليها الخم. So the motive behind doing anything, even against your desire, and the motive behind abstaining from anything which you actually desire, is realizing the purpose of life. You believe in Allah. Which also implies and entails that you must believe in the information that Allah the Almighty have communicated to us through His Messenger, which is there will be life after death. People have been chasing after wealth, beautiful things, achievement, assuming that that will bring them success. That may be true. That may be false. Look what Allah the Almighty says in this regard in Surah Al-Kahf, chapter number 18, verse number 46. Allah the Almighty says in this beautiful verse, Al-Malu wal-Banoon zinatu al-Hayat al-Dunya wal-Baqiyat al-Salihat khayrun عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا. Wealth and children are the beauty of the life of this world. Who would like to be a millionaire? Who would like to have plenty of wealth, a beautiful wife, and many kids? It is a human desire. المال والبنون is the glitter, is the beauty of the life of this world. But Allah the Almighty says. وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتِ The everlasting good righteous deeds are better before your Lord with your Creator in respect of reward and in respect of anticipation. خَيْرٌ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ أَمَلًا What are الْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتِ In the other hadith which is narrated by Jabir ibn Abdullah collected by Imam al-Tirmidhi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explains that الْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتِ are those few words of dhikr is to say subhanallah, to say alhamdulillah, to say Allahu Akbar, or to say la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Any form of dhikr is an everlasting good deed because its reward lasts even after you expire. So this is one of the indications as how to make the best use of time and this is what the believers are in need to chase after. It doesn't mean at all that we are not supposed to look forward to prosper, to get married, 
to have beautiful family, to drive a nice car. But it shouldn't be your main focus. It shouldn't be your main focus. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah the Almighty says in the two consecutive ayahs, 99 and 100, حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال رب رجعون قال رب رجعون لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت كلا إنها كلمة هو قائلها ومن ورائهم so people are either losers in respect of how they deal with time or successful those who believe those who do good righteous deeds enjoin one another to the truth and enjoin one another to patience on the other hand, the vast, vast majority of mankind are losers. Whenever any of those losers is lying down on his or her deathbed, they would only long for one thing. They would only beg Allah the Almighty for one thing. The thing is to go back to life, to be given an extension. Some time to do what? The ayah explains, قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجُعُونَ Whenever death overtakes in your thumb, he will beg Allah the Almighty says, رَبِّ ارْجُعُونَ Take me back. Give me some time. Why? What do you want to do with it? لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتُ In order to do good deeds in the remaining time. There is no remaining time. Time is up. Then what? وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخٌ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ And in front of them, ahead of them, is a barrier that prevents them from coming back to life, which is Hayatul Barzakh, until the day of resurrection. So if they died without achieving the true success, then they are the true losers. In Surah Fatr, in Ayah number 37, Allah the Almighty over the losers in respect of time who will end up in hell while they are crying out loud calling upon Allah the Almighty they are in hell calling upon Allah the Almighty saying what? رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا نَعْمَلْ صَالِحًا غَيْرَ الَّذِي كُنَّا نَعْمَلْ Our Lord take us out why? in order to do better deeds better than those which we used to do. So Allah the Almighty will answer them with this certain question. أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّرْكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرُ وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرُ فَذُوقُوا فَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ نَصِيرُ Did we not preserve for you life which is long enough to be mindful and to take heed? But you didn't. He didn't take advantage of that. Those who lose the many opportunities that Allah the Almighty grant us in this life to achieve success, to book a seat in heaven, and they don't. They are indeed the greatest losers. وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ نَصِيرٍ And the unjust doers will have no supporters, no helpers on the Day of Judgment. Al-Hasan al-Basri the great faqih of Iraq and the great tabi'i used to say, Innama anta yawm, Innama anta ayyam. Each and every one of us is made up of a bunch of days. Fa'ida mada yawmun, mada ba'duk. Whenever a day passes by, then a part of you is gone. If you're supposed to live for 50, 60, or 70 years, and a year elapsed, one year is gone, what does it mean? It means you're getting closer to your term. What is so good about that to celebrate 
and to throw a party and to congratulate one another. Happy birthday. For what? For getting close to your term. Imagine somebody who's destined to live for 59 years and now he's 58. He doesn't know that. He has only one year left to live. And he's celebrating. And people are wishing him a long life. Wishing him what? It's actually a warner. Every day that passes by is a warner. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma used to say every morning with every day break the day addresses us saying to us take advantage of me since I shall never come back until the day of judgment. One of the things which can never ever be recovered is time. Once it is gone, it is gone. You can never recover it. It's over. And that's why that is called the greatest loss. If you look into the third ayah, which prescribes the elements of success in Surah Al-Asr, Allah the Almighty says, except for those who believe, do good righteous deeds, and do a couple more things. In the Quran, there is, a, there is 60 ayahs in which Allah the Almighty promises the believers with paradise, forgiveness, and pardoning. But not a single ayah of them promises them to enter heaven simply because they believed. Rather, every ayah would entail the following. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ it isn't sufficient to say, I'm a believer. Good for you. Then what is next? Prove it. Al-Iman ma waqara fil qalbi wa saddaqahu al-amal. You have to verify it. You have to prove it. There are certain things which Allah the Almighty have ordained upon you. Did you do them? No, but I'm a believer. Says who? There are certain prohibitions which Allah the Almighty have ordained you to stay away from. Did you do it? Do you abstain yourself from doing them? No, I didn't. But I'm a believer. Says who? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ People are in loss, except those who act upon their faith by implementing whatever Allah the Almighty have guided them to do. And not only that, they enjoin one another to doing it, to the truth. And this matter requires a lot of struggle. The hardest thing upon the person is to give an advice or to accept an advice. If you have a spouse, a child, or a parent, a sibling, a colleague, or a friend who is committing a sin, it is very hard to give them a nasiha wa tawasaw bil haq. That's why it requires a lot of patience. And it is not one time deal you say, I already told him. I already advise her. It is up to them if they want to take the advice. No, constantly. At tawasi, constantly enjoining one another to the truth and constantly enjoining one another to patience. And the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that no one will be dismissed on the day of judgment before having to answer four questions. لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن أربع. One of the four questions is about his life. What did you do with it? What are your achievements in this life? I made a fortune. I became a CEO of a company. Uh, I got my PhD in whatever. Okay, with regards to your relationship with your creator. With regards to fulfilling the purpose for which you were created. You know, brothers and sisters, we may take it for granted. We think that we know it all. We know why we were created. But guess what? Most of mankind fail to answer this question. Once I was giving a talk in the States, and I just simply asked this question to a huge number of audience. Do you know what is the purpose of life? And no one raised their hands. So I repeated the question. Only one person offered to answer. He said, please. He got up and said, well, it was my 
parents' fault. Is this the purpose of life? You're brought in, in this life to eat, to drink, to satisfy your lust and desire, and that's it. So when you die, you die like a cattle. In Surah Al-An'am, I believe in ayah number 179, Allah the Almighty made mention of that. وَلَقَدْ ذَرَأْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا لَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا لَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا أُولَٰئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلٌ Allah has created some people for hellfire. They were created with intellect, with hearts and mind, but they never use them to ponder, to reflect, or to comprehend the purpose of life and what they need to do in order to be successful. They have eyes with which they do not see. They have ears with which they do not hear. They chose not to use the faculties of senses to realize the purpose of life. So Allah the Almighty equated them to what? Ula'ika kal an'am. Such people are like cattle. Nay, they are even worse. There is a benefit of the cattle, but those people have no benefit. They live for themselves. And once they suffer of any calamity, they simply take their lives because they think life is not worth it. Such people are the negligent one. Brothers and sisters, when we go back to the ayah of Surah Al-Mu'minun, when death overcomes one of them, he would wish and long for only one thing. This only one thing is to go back to life, is to be given an extension. I want to do an experiment with you. It's kind of tough. It's kind of hard. But it is a reality. I mean, even if we don't do it right now, each and every one of us will experience it sooner or later. So I want you to imagine this person whose time is up and he can visualize the angels of death are coming to take his or her life and he's begging Allah, please give me another chance. Give me a little bit of extension. Can we all close our eyes for one minute and think about this person, it is you or me. And you're begging Allah the Almighty, please send me back. Give me one more week. Give me one more day. Give me one more hour. What are you going to do in this time? Well, I have some amanat. I have to send it back. I have pending zakah. I didn't pay. I want to pay it. I use not to pray, I'm going to repent, and I'm going to start praying. I use not to remember you. Now I'm going to make much of dhikr in the remaining time. Let's all begin. We'll close our eyes for one minute. And think about it, that when you're begging Allah the Almighty to come back to life, then instead of hearing, nay, by no means, you will never go back to life, Rather, you'll be able to open up your eyes. You'll be able to see each other. And you'll be given another opportunity. We'll do it right now. But not only right now. We need to do it very often. We need to remember this moment as much as we can in order to realize that this moment will happen to each and every one of us, no doubt. Only the successful people will receive the angels of death with warm welcome because they would tell them that نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِ أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ نُزُلًا مِّنْ غَفُورٍ رَحِيمٍ Let's all close our eyes for a few seconds. It doesn't have to be for a whole minute. Please do it. Close your eyes. Think about this. You're told time is up. How many things would you like to come back to life in order to achieve. What are the things which worry you the most? Shopping, of course not. Your business, obviously not. Your degree, your master's, your PhD, moving to a bigger house, buying a newer model, 
No, none of the above. What do you want to do? Open up your eyes. Each and every one of us, answer yourselves. What do you want to do? Now Allah the Almighty honored your request. And he gave you and he gave me another opportunity. We're actually enjoying those opportunities on daily basis. 24 hours a day. But unfortunately we are very negligent. Or at least most. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Alhaakum al-takathur. Rivalry and competition in piling up wealth kept you busy. Hatta zurtum al-maqabir. Until you ended up in the graveyard. The person will keep saying, my wealth, my wealth, my car, my house, my property, my this, my that. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and do you actually own of your wealth anything other than what you have eaten, digested and executed? What you have wore until you tear? What you have spent in a charity and that is your only saving? And besides that, it is gone. I mean, I heard of this very, very rich person, multi-millionaire. He was a Muslim. When he died, he have let he have left a wasiyah, a will, which consists of two segments. So his lawyer said to his ears that the wasiyah consists of two segments. One, which we have to read before the burial. And the other is after we bury him. Every one of his family members was anxiously waiting to know his share of all those millions of dollars. So when he read the first segment of the wasiyah, he only demanded one thing. It was so strange. He said, please, whatever you do, don't take my socks off. Keep my socks on. Bury me with my socks on. Everybody was surprised. There must be a secret in those socks. They consulted the mufti, the sheikh. He said, look, in order to wash his body, we have to strip him naked. Even we have to take off his dirty socks. So they did. Because it's an invalid wasiyah. And apparently he knew that. Then, when they washed him, they wrapped him in the coffin, and they buried him. Now they returned. They opened the second segment. What was in the second segment? He said, I knew that. You would not leave anything for me, not even my dirty socks. As the message been delivered, you will take nothing out of this life, not even your dirty socks. You will take nothing out of this life except your deeds, your actions. You know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, أعمار أمتي بين الستين والسبعين The lifespan of the average people in my ummah is between 60 to 70. وقليل منهم من يجوز ذلك Not too many people actually survive to 90 or 100. Worldwide we... Make a big deal when we see a person who's over 100. Nowadays, in the past, people used to live for hundreds of years. Not anymore. And the closer we come to the day of judgment, the shorter the lifespan gets. I visited some countries where I was told that the lifespan, average lifespan is 50. If somebody lives beyond that, he's a mu'ammir. So... What are we going to do in 60 or 70 years? You know that Prophet Nuh lived for how many years? For how many years? Huh? The 950 is his mission time. He was given da'wah only for 950 years. But he lived for maybe 1250 years. So people used to live for hundreds of years. But we are very masakin. We live only for... 50, 60, 70, and a lot of youth are expiring nowadays. And if you look into the reality of our lifespan, I just answered a question before I come on the stage. And somebody from Canada was asking me that his daughter had reached the puberty age, experiencing the menses at the age of nine, was asking about fasting and so on. Average persons, 11, 12, 13, Maybe 15 years before achieving the age of puberty. Before that age, all our deeds are not being reported against us. So 
So until you, you attain the age of puberty, the angels will not record anything against you. Any bad deed will not be recorded. They'll say that the average 60 years. So we take out of the 60, 15 years. They're not even recorded. And an average person sleeps how many hours a day? Average person, eight hours. So that is total 20 years out of the 60. That is how many years? 35 years gone without hisab. Because whenever you are asleep, there is no hisab. You're not doing anything. And before puberty, there is no hisab. And if you're eating, drinking, if you're remaining quiet, so that's several years. Basically, would remain for you approximately 15 to 20 years. The time that you need to prove yourself to be successful. The time you need to obtain the certificate of al-falah. Success in order to receive salvation. Because of that, we are very masakin. We're very poor. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have informed us that Allah the Almighty have blessed us, this ummah particularly brothers and sisters, by giving us in this very short lifespan that we live, several opportunities to double and triple our lifespan. How? How can one double and triple his lifespan? Number one, we're approaching a blessed month of Ramadan. Now we are in the second half of Rajab. Less than six weeks, inshallah, for the month of Ramadan. During the month of Ramadan, there is one night which Allah the Almighty revealed an entire surah called Surah Al-Qadr. In order to bring to our attention the greatness of this night, he said, Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alfi shah. The worship which is observed on this one single night is better than a worship which is observed during the period of 1,000 months and more constantly. That is 83 years and a couple months. That's an, another lifespan. Every Ramadan passes by while people are busy and distracted with shopping for Eid or watching TV or doing whatever. They're wasting an entire lifespan. When I ask you that a question which I keep getting, Sheikh, tell us, was Laylatul Qadr last night? Tell us, was it on the 23rd or the 25th? Isn't it on the odd nights? Brothers and sisters, it is one of the last 10 nights. One of the last 10 nights. Forget about odd or even. It is an opportunity which only comes once every year. And if you hit it right, that's another entire lifespan. 83 years and a couple months of constant worship. Khair. Better. What a waste. When some people take it lightly or plan their trips, or their gatherings. I tell my wife, no invitations, no dinner, no family gatherings. This time is a very crucial time. We have to benefit ourselves out of this time. And we have to spread the word. And we have to tell everyone else, we'll buy you food outside, but we're not inviting anyone, nor are we accepting any invitations, because this time is very, very precious. Then. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah the Almighty scatter some precious time throughout the year. Take advantage of them. For instance, on the 10th of Muharram, Ashura, fasting on that day expiates the sins of the entire past year. Fasting on the 9th of Arafah, of Dhul Hijjah, which is the day of Arafah, expiates the sins of two years, the entire past year and a year to come. Allah is most merciful. So he said that, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ Verily, mankind are in loss except الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ How many good deeds can we do in a matter of 10, 15, or 20 years? A lot. Listen to this hadith, brothers and sisters. In order to ponder over how can one actually double and triple his or her lifespan. Al-Imam Ahmad May Allah have mercy on him, collected a hadith which is narrated by Talha ibn Ubaidillah. May Allah be pleased with him. He said that once during the life of Prophet Muhammad two people 
have showed up before him and accepted Islam on the same day, on the same hour. Then one of them, كان أشد اجتهادا من أخيه في العبادة. One of them was much more active than the other when it comes to worship. He wouldn't only do the fard, but the nawafil, fast awfully, pray the emphatic and non-emphatic sunnah and night prayer. Everyone witnessed that. One of them was much more active than the other in worship. Not only that, he joined the Muslim army and in one of the expeditions, he was martyred. So he died as a shaheed. The other person who accepted Islam on the same day survived him and lived for one entire year after him. Then he died a normal death on his deathbed. So the shaheed died a year earlier than the other one. And the shaheed was much more active in ibadah by the shahada and the testimony of the sahaba. Talha ibn Ubaidillah says, I saw them both in a night vision, in a dream. Myself and both of them were standing in front of the gate of Al-Jannah. Then a guard, an angel from paradise stepped out and he called on the one who died later. The one who was less active in worship. The one who died a normal death and said, please join me. And he escorted him to heaven. Then a while later he stepped out and he called on the shaheed, the one who was much more active in ibadah, and said, please join me. And then he returned back to Talha ibn Ubaidillah and he said to him, you're not due to enter yet. When Talha ibn Ubaidillah woke up, he shared this night vision, the ru'ya with the companions. And everyone was puzzled. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came upon them and he overheard their conversation. So he said, Min What is amazing you? What is so strange in this dream? They said, Ya Rasulullah, the guy who was much more active in worship, the guy who died as a shaheed, enters Al-Jannah later? Why? They have dealt with the ru'ya as if it is a fact. And it is a fact. Al-ru'ya sadiqa So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked the following questions. He said, didn't the other one lived for another complete year? Then the shaheed did not get to live. They said, yes. He said, well, that means he witnessed a whole month of Ramadan that the shaheed died before witnessing. They said, right. They said, and it also means that he got to pray over 6,000 rak'ahs, 17 rak'ahs every day at least. That is the fard. Times 356, that is over 6,000 rak'ahs. If you just pray the fard. They said, yes. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam remarked saying, by Allah in whose hand is my soul, the gap, the degree between them in paradise is bigger and vaster than the gap between the heavens and the earth. The one who lived for another year is in a higher place in Al-Jannah than the shaheed because he lived extra. Your capital sum, our capital sum is time. Every minute that we live, is plus. Imagine when somebody loses his capital sum. When somebody loses all his investment, then he's bankrupt. That is, in al insana lafi khusr. Because he lost the most valuable thing that he possesses the opportunity to do good deeds, the opportunity to build up an asset of hasanat. That's why we should be very appreciative to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he gave us another chance to live another day. And today's talk and today's gathering should be a turning point in my life and in the life of every one of the audience to appreciate time, to realize that this is not for granted. We will be held accountable for that. We got to make the best use out of time, brothers and sisters. How? How can one do that? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in one hadith, أَكْثِرُوا مِنَ الْبَاقِيَاتِ الصَّالِحَاتِ 
استكثروا من الباقيات الصالحات. And we discussed earlier, الباقيات الصالحات refer to the top of ذكر of saying سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Do as much as you can of them. This what will benefit you most. This which will guarantee you success on the day of judgment. والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا. Every night before we go to sleep, most of us have some traditions of looking into their social media, checking out their messages, the news, who's born, who died, who bought what, who lost what, who got married to whom, unnecessary informations, photos, videos, waste of time. May I ask you normally how much time do you consume? All the social media, media consumes of your time before you go to sleep, even though you've been busy also throughout the day, during the breaks and while eating and while drinking with your best friend. How much time do you waste before going to sleep? 20 minutes? 40 minutes? It takes even more than that. It takes the sleep out of your eyes. Guess what? A lot of people complain that I have nightmares, I experience bad dreams, I have insomnia. So when we advise them, do you normally recite your azkar before you go to sleep? No, I can't. I don't have time. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna suratan shafa'at li sahibiha hatta adkhalathu al-jannah. One chapter of the Quran, which consists of 30 verses, have interceded for its companion. I love that term, sahib. I understand that I can be a sahib to any of you because human beings can be friends to each other. But how can a person be a sahib to a surah of a surah of a chapter of the Quran? Because he frequently recites it. They became so attached to each other. So when he died, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this surah interceded for him and argued on his behalf before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until it saved him and made him enter paradise. This surah which consists of 30 ayat is surah Tabarak al-Mulk, which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indicated in one hadith that whoever recites it every night, will be protected again is the torment of the grave. Again is the torment of the grave. What a great deal. But how many of us actually spare some time to recite it? It will not take more than three minutes. And another couple minutes to recite Ayat al kursi in order to, to be protected from every Satan until the morning. And another one or two minutes to recite the last two ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah for which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whoever recites the last two ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah fi laylatin kafata, they would be sufficient for him. You've done your homework. And they're sufficient as means of protection until the morning. But we don't have time for that. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu an, who's married to Fatima, the Prophet's daughter, have seen Fatima's hand got worn out of grinding the wheat and the corn and baking the bread and fixing everything. So he went to the Prophet ﷺ and he asked him for a servant. He said, go home and I will come and visit you tonight both. So when it was night, the Prophet ﷺ came and he visited them both and he found that they were covered with a sheet that if they were cover their heads, their feet would show. And if they cover their feet, their heads would show, indicating their poor condition. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Ali ibn Abi Talib and Fatima, his sweetheart and his daughter, you guys wanted a khadim, you wanted a servant. Oh yes, indeed. He said, Afala adullukuma ala khayrim min khadim. Shall I not guide you to something which is even better than having a maid and a domestic helper? 
said, certainly, O Prophet of Allah, he said, before going to sleep, I want you to say Subhanallah 33 times. And to say Alhamdulillah 33 times. And to say Allahu Akbar, how many times? 34 times. فَذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمَا مِنْ خَادِمٍ if you do that, that will be better for you than having a domestic help, than having a maid. Did they argue? He trusted the Prophet وسلم, and took it as is. So Ali ibn Abi Talib says in the hadith, by Allah, ever since the Prophet وسلم, taught us that, I have never ever forgotten to say it on every single night. So one of the audience asked a silly question. He said, not even on the night of Sufin, on the night of the battle of Sufin, when he was confronting the army of Muawiyah, may Allah be pleased with all of them, he said, not even on the night of Sufi. You know, brothers and sisters, no matter what kind of work you do, physical, mental work, if you're very exhausted, wallahi, wallahi, when you recite the dhikr, subhanallah, 33 times, alhamdulillah, 33 times, and Allahu Akbar, 34 times before you go to sleep, even if you catch a couple hours of sleep, it will feel like you've been asleep for hours. And you will wake up very fresh and active. Why? It is Allah the Almighty who gives you the chance to sleep. Some people keep flipping over, having insomnia, and they take pills, and they never fall asleep. But I'm going to tell you from now. Try it and text me, or write to me on my page. How many times before you are able to make the 100 times you were knocked down? It happens a lot. Once I was given the khutbah in Jumu'ah and I talked about that. And somebody, an old man came to me and said, Wallahi, every time I start it, I fall asleep before I finish it. Do you know why? Shaitan would do anything, anything to hinder you from the dhikr. Do not give him this opportunity. That will take you all 10 minutes. Tabarak al-Mulk, Ayat al-Kursi, the last two ayahs of Surah al-Baqarah, the Mu'awwithat, and you wipe over your face and head and the rest of your body to say the Tasbih, 10, 15 minutes maximum. And the time will be stolen out of your hand if you're sitting before the social media for 20, 30, or 40 minutes and you would not even feel, oh my God, I've been sitting for an hour, reading unnecessary news. Now, this is just, or that was just a hint, as there are many, many things that we can do in order to benefit out of time. Last but not the least, brothers and sisters, amongst the things which can definitely double and triple our lifespan and can even keep it to continue until the Day of Judgment is what is narrated in the sound hadith, by Abu Hurairah radiyallahu an, and the hadith is collected by Imam Muslim. May Allah have mercy on him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا مَاتَ الْعَبْدُ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثٍ Whenever any of us will die, all our good deeds will be interrupted. You used to pray, no more hasanat because you're not praying anymore. You used to fast, fasting has been interrupted. So there are no more hasanat for fasting. But there are three means which will guarantee the continuity of the reward for your good deeds. The first is the continuous charity. Yesterday, we're having a fundraise to build a masjid. So long as this masjid is erecting and people are praying, every single time somebody is bound down and prostrating himself in the masjid, if you invested in this masjid, you are receiving hasana. Maybe I'm dead. Hundred, two, three hundred years ago. But the reward is continuous. Sadaqat in jariya, an orphanage, a school, a water well for people to drink out of it, a hospital, whatever. Sadaqat in jariya, a useful knowledge. Some people, subhanAllah, create pages to collect and upload speeches of other speakers. We don't even know them, but they're very smart because they are propagating the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone who would get to listen to it, they benefit out of that. Without diminishing the reward of either one of them. And that is a true investment to leave behind a righteous child. Well, the Prophet sallallahu didn't say he has to be a doctor 
or an MD. He has to be whatever. He can be whatever. But what counts most and what is most important is to leave behind waladin salih, whether it is a boy or a girl. The only child who will remember you in his or her dua is a salih. May Allah grant us all a goodly of spring. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us make the best use out of our time. May Allah grant us forgiveness. Allahumma ballighna Ramadan wa ballighna Laylat al-Qadr wa aghfir lana dhunubana wa kaffir anna sayyatina aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.